Hello, witch folk. Welcome to our coven. We're Angels on Broomsticks. We're a mother-daughter duo. I'm Kristen. And I'm Evangeline. And it's Thursday, so you're tuning into our series, Witches, Bitches, Martinis, and Makeup. Which is our Thursday series where we do our makeup, we drink a cocktail of the day, and we talk about witchy and bitchy things. So what's the cocktail? The cocktail today is the Anna Wintour. Cheers. It's called the Anna Wintour because we just called it the Anna Wintour yes. today. We just had vodka and we didn't know what to do. So we just yeah. put in vodka and some cran. Cran, raz, and soda. And Anna Wintour. Does that make, that makes sense, right? Anna Wintour. She was the editor of Vogue in the 1980s. So that brings us to our topic of the day, and we're going to be talking about the documentary Paris is Burning by Jenny Livingston, which looks at ball culture in Harlem in the 1980s. We're also going to be sort of talking about 80s makeup, talking about Vogue, the song by Madonna and its origins in ball culture. And then that brings us to the palette of the day. The palette of the day, I had just dusted off like a couple of weeks ago. Ulyssa Edwards, Anastasia Beverly Hills from 2019. Now, this is a gorgeous palette. Guys, don't sleep on it. <laughs> it's still available. Um, I'm super happy I looked at it again because um, when you open it up, these are the most beautiful neutrals ever. The purples and the pinks are like probably nothing you have in your collection. They're super 80s inspired. And Alyssa Edwards was on RuPaul's Drag Race, mm -hmm. as you all know, probably, because you probably watch it. <laughs> and then we also just, like, just as a side note, we dusted off this Kat Von D fetish. Not available anymore, but this is super 80s, in my opinion. This blush yeah. and like lavender, <laughs> which is crazy and the highlighters yeah. so yeah that's what we use today if you can't tell it is 80s inspired mm -hmm. <laughs> so definitely stay tuned if you want to see how we made these looks and if you want to join in on our conversation about Paris's burning keep on watching I'm using my foundation I used to use in the 80s from Mac which is it it's the Mac it's a powder foundation Studio Studio six. six. They used to use it religiously. In nineteen eighty five and onward. Hmm. I'm just doing a modern base because I must. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do lots of modern, but like yeah. I'm inspired by Deborah Harry, one of my favorite eighties performers. Um I used to like Brooke Shields too, so We'll do her furry little eyebrows <laughs> and Deborah Harry's style, I think. Yeah, I was looking up a lot of 80s makeup, trying to get some idea, but it... Oh. You think it's ugly? It's wretched. Mm. Like, literally, there's so many colors people had on their eyes, like, smudged and it's all murky. Literally, like, photos of Madonna with murky, unplucked Madonna. eyebrows. Ugh. Poor Madonna. <laughs> Her heyday was in an ugly era. Hmm. So was mine. Yeah. I would have liked to have my heyday in the 60s. Yeah. So anyway, like every single conversation during COVID times I have starts with, I was listening to a podcast on my podcast. Anyway, so I was inspired by my podcast, my favorite murder, Karen Kilgariff. Yeah, I have like parasocial relationships with these people. Karen Kilgariff in particular, because she and I share the same birthday. Hmm. She's from My Favorite Murder. My Favorite Murder, yeah. Karen and Georgia Hardstark. So, she was talking about the movie Paris is Burning that you, you said you saw in film school. I actually saw or it. You didn't go to I film was school. In, no, I, my minor was film, and I had another minor sexual diversity studies. So I saw it in my sexual diversity studies ah. class. But it had been so long that I didn't really remember the details of the of the documentary. So we watched it this weekend. Yeah, I had never even seen it, to be honest. It's 1990, the movie, but it was set in the 80s. Yeah, mid to late but, 80s. Uh, yeah, it's like I loved that era. Because it was in New York City, and that's when I went to New York City for the first time. So it was like the hip-hop, 
was just starting and it was all like street culture. In Karen's podcast, um, she was talking about the murder, but not the murder of one of the characters who... Venus. Yeah. What happened, and we didn't know it behind the scenes, is there was a basically a carcass in the closet of one of the characters that you see whose name is uh, Dorian. In the Dorian Corey's closet, there was a, a dead body that had mummified. It was wrapped in a, in like a dress bag, I guess, or a garment bag. Nobody really knows how it got there. Yeah, who knows? It's an interesting story. So check out my favorite murder for that backstory. <laughs> but also check out this movie because it, you know, it pertains to a lot of things like Rue Paul's Drag Race. Like you, you know about when balls started, right? Oh, so I was looking up a little bit. Well, if you haven't seen Paris is Burning, basically what it is is a documentary in the 80s filming ball culture, which was when specifically members of the queer community, the black and Latinx queer communities came together and they would do these balls where they'd often dress up. This is where voguing came from and it was a huge community thing. They had houses, which was when members of the community came together and formed their own families. Your dad did that. Oh, he did? Yeah, her father was in a house. I've they were called from, you know, the Amway products, the Vaughn Amways. Nobody knows. <laughs> he wasn't queer, though. No, but was but anybody? Was, I don't know. They were in a queer? band, and they were like, their, all their names were battleships. So he was Mertz from... He had this whole other name. Yeah. And they were in the phone book under the Vaughn Amways. <laughs> I that totally forgot 80s. what I was saying. Anyway. Oh, sorry. No, it's okay. I was like, <laughs> wait, why? I'm explaining ball culture a little bit. It's pretty complex because it has a lot of, oh yes, history. It actually originated in the late 19th century with queer communities coming together, usually in big cities. It was a counterculture to the fact that it was like illegal to dress in the opposite gender. And so it would be a place where people would perform drag. Originally, it was like, it was an integrated like group of people, but there was always white judges and there became kind of a bit of a weird tension in a way, like the white, it was always white judges and then it was unfair treatment to the black community. So then they ended up forming their own ball culture, I feel like around the 60s. And then we see this in the 80s in Paris is Burning. And then you see it, now in RuPaul's Drag Wait. RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> I can say that. I've only watched one season of it, but they have these things called categories where you're doing mm -hmm. specific performative things, and that comes from ball culture. A lot of people think it's just drag culture, but it's all comes from balls. So in in this one, in Paris is Burning, they have like little competitions where they're dressed as men in suits. Like yeah. corporate men. Yes. It's like who can be the most, they call it realness, like the most corporate realness. And it's like you're performing your straight counterpart in the real world. And it's like you want to look as straight as possible. And originally you were kind of like, well, that's weird. And I feel like it's because you're pointing to how performative heteronormativity is as well. Yes. So, yeah, in the, in the documentary they show a lot of that, like trying to look as straight as possible, and it's really funny. Did they have highlighter in the 80s? No, but let's put a uh, highlighter on anyway. I okay. did. I um, don't think highlighter was a thing, or nor was bronzer. No, I did a little contour. And I'm going really blushy, because they seem to always have pink they like, blush. They always had blush. Like, we had this girl in school who always had this triangle of orange. I think I brought her up. You when did? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go heavy on the brow, but using this Huda, the new Huda pencil liner, it's so delicate and like fine. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna do brows too. I guess I will go heavier than normal, but it's gonna take me a while to concentrate. So okay, how about we just do our brows and we'll okay, be right back. We'll, we'll be right back and do, and do our eyes, eyes. 
I tried to do my eyebrows a little bit thicker and longer than normal because that's what I saw in the I'm pictures. I'm going to do Debbie. I'm going to take inspo from that picture. Debbie got well. tight lined. Who is that? Deborah Harry. A model? Blondie. Rapture. Once had a love, it was a gas. I know Blondie. I didn't know her real name. You can't teach them. You can only teach them not to do cocaine. But you can't teach them who Blondie is. I know who Madonna is. Speaking of Madonna. Uh, like... You could live without Madonna. You can't live without Blondie. Yeah, okay. Or Deborah <laughs> Harry. I feel like you can't talk about ballroom culture and specifically Paris is Burning without talking about Vogue. -ing. I guess voguing is a cultural phenomenon everybody probably knows now, am I right? But anyway, I think it's a pretty interesting conversation to bring up when you look at Madonna introducing Vogue to the mainstream. I think there are a lot of aspects of it that are problematic, um, but there's also some aspects of it that are really empowering. The way she actually like worked with choreographers from the house extravaganza and they toured with her they helped her direct the music video for vogue they were her dancers but also like you have to look at how like she kind of profited off of something that was very sacred in a way to marginalized communities especially people of color it would have been even like a nice step for her in the, I don't know if you remember the lyrics, but I, I actually listened to it today. At the end, she lists all these icons. like Marilyn Monroe, you trick. Yes. Like it would have been really great to throw in some people who weren't white in there, or maybe even some of the people who created Voguing. But it's definitely interesting thing to look at because Madonna was also an icon for the queer community and she's gotten awards for her advocacy and allyship. But also looking at this documentary like we looked up these people today and so many of them have passed away yeah unfortunately from aids and also you know even murder yeah so one of the members of the house extravaganza venus extravaganza she was like early 20s and she was and she ended up being found murdered like probably oh, and no one knows and no police don't care no Therein lies the problem, like, sex workers and people of that community. Mm -hmm. uh, the police don't care. Yeah. So I feel like when you look at these kinds of histories, you also have to look at the, the celebratory nature of it, but also, like, you can't really ignore these things. And this was just such an integral part of the community. And I think especially the houses are such a beautiful way of showing how these people created their own families. And that's really what I think this documentary like brought to light. Yeah, I thought it was a great, do you, so fun. Do you remember when Vogue came out? Yes. Tell me about it. Do you remember, like, did you, did you have an awareness that it came from Harlem Balls? Yes, I did. Cool. Well, because I'm... A savvy girl. <laughs> we can check the year Vogue came out, but yeah. I was, you know, fully formed adult. I'm, I think I was married even. It was, I looked it up today. It was like the early, I think it was 1990. Yeah, I was just married. I remember when the song was popular in that summer, we went to the Wild Water Kingdom uh, on the Lazy River. Oh my God. And yeah, with your ass hanging down and you're <gasps> stuck in a inner tube and your ass is hanging down. I'm sure so many people pee in that. But I remember that song coming on. Vogue. You're just like in your yeah. little thing. Come on. Vogue. Vogue. <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> but yeah, your dad actually worked on that Mad Madonna tour. What? <laughs> yeah. What no, did he, he didn't really work on the tour. When she came to Toronto, he was like a PA on it. Oh my God. So like, we got to see her... Uh, I got to see her concert like I was in the sixth row. Oh, you know who was beside me? Oh. Howie Mandel with his family. Who's Howie Mandel? This one, I bet. I don't know. He's the one who's afraid of germs, the comedian. He's like on, okay. you know, America's Got Talent. He's very famous. But he was there with his family. Oh. But, you know, he didn't seem germophobic. <laughs> but, yeah, 
anyway, that's my celebrity. <laughs> then some of those dancers were probably in it. The yeah. people from House Six Chapel. That, 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 was, that was what was cool about it. The dancers, all the dancing, etc. Yeah. She puts on a good show. Yeah. Am I doing this in any way right? Like, what show? <laughs> I don't. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, when I in the right 80s, now. I was not good at makeup. Okay. Like I, we had Mac. I had all these neon colors, but I never used them. I just mm. looked at them. Okay. I'm just kind of like making this wingy, soft, colorful thing, and I'm gonna call it 80s. I think I like what I just did. It looks beautiful. Yeah. I like this. Pink and purple are very popular. Yes. Because I used to have like sweatshirts and like we'd have those cut off sweatshirts like flash dance but aerobics was big yeah I used to take aerobic classes with these oh leotards God. what is with those outfits we used to have like a bodysuit over top of like like leggings I guess yeah and then when the 90s kind of rolled around those bodysuits became I never wore this but thongs so you would have this thong thing over top leggings. When you exercise. Which is so ugly to me. I never liked a thong. No. I still think they're no. ugly. No, like, okay, asses are beautiful, but like, I don't want to see ass skin because no, it isn't. It's usually there's zips on it. Like, oh ew. Why? Why thong? Why? I don't know. They're uncomfortable. Don't you think little boy shorts are cuter? Like, if yes. even just with a little bit of ass hanging down, <laughs> if you want to be ass. Assy? Yeah, there's I so many the ass, asses in the picture. Back in the 80s, it wasn't about ass. It was about boobs. Okay. Nobody had an ass back then. Yeah, you weren't allowed to. No. It's all about being skinny as mm -hmm. fuck. But in the 80s, my makeup style was just a bunch of uh, liner. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, yeah. I can't wait to do my liner. Because I got the the Danessa Myrex, the black one, and I tight lined and I did my inner corner this morning. So I've already had makeup on. I'm going to do it again. Should it's, I be doing a liner? You do what you want. Okay. Okay. We used to do, like, because we liked the 60s back then. We used to do wing liner. But we could never figure out how to do it. We did it with like cake eyeliner <laughs> that we got at Benny Noodleman's pharmacy. Revlon makeup from the 60s that we used to buy. Shimmers? Were shimmers a big thing or was it mostly like mattes? Um, I had this coolest thing from Christian Dior and it was these four white shadows. You can still get this sort of thing anywhere where it was iridescent. So one was a green. It's white in the pan, but you know, when you swipe it, it looks, there's a green shift, pink shift. Mm. I had one of those. I never wore it because I didn't know how to do it, anything, but I looked at it. So yeah, I don't know, shimmers. Not like the way it is now. Oh yeah, that looks 80s. Shit. Mm. Yeah, but I was, I was, I was a cowboy then. I should know. Let's do our mascara. Okay, we'll do our mascara. We'll see if I'll need liner. And we'll be right back. Okay, we're, we're back. back. We're gonna do our lips. I tried. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do a bright pink lip. I have Candy Venom from the Fenty Mademoiselle. What do I have? Wait, do the same thing? I don't know. Yes. Oh shit. LOL. Okay. <laughs> I just have one thing to say. Mm -hmm. Don't sleep on this Alyssa Edwards palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's so good. I still have it? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I love it. I kind of, That's another thing. Like, Even before I was listening to the podcast, I actually brought it out because I had it. And I dusted it off. And it's like, this is so good. Like the, this, the camel colors in there. Like this here, whoa, it's so beautiful because everyone's loving a cool tone, neutral. But I mean, I really don't have these vivid purples so much that aren't like shiny. Love it. Also, I have a surprise for you guys. Oh yeah. 
we're going to complete the look with some jewelry that I had from the 80s. Okay, so apparently gloss was I think gloss, 80s, yes, gloss. so I'm going to put some gloss on. Do you on. remember seeing Molly Ringwald put lipstick, lip gloss on with her cleavage? She put the lip gloss in her cleavage in Breakfast Club. Oh, I don't remember. Remember? That. that was her trick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she put it on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, lip gloss was the thing. <laughs> what? I don't know about this 80s in spo makeup, personally. <laughs> I do. Such a time. Uh, I couldn't put it on my cleavage. <laughs> okay. Earrings, guys, guys, guys. She won't let me see what these are. I don't know if you've ever seen them in my collection, eh? Oh, those, I know those. Okay. I've never seen you wear these them. These are two. One, and I have a second pair. I want to talk about these for a second. I think these are perfectly 80s. Are they clip on? They're clip on! Clip on. Oh my god. Did you see them? So, I had another round thing coming down. And I went to a party once, and this guy came up to me and goes, your earrings are just one round thing too long. One oh, round thing and too long. And this is long. me, such a fucking idiot. I took him down. So there was another round thing. Yeah. Oh, I see the... <sighs> Fuck that guy. That would have been way more epic with He's the extra. He's such a fucking loser. I hate him. But they do look pretty like that, too, so it's okay. Okay, and then I have the second pair, which I think I want to wear. Really? Can I wear but, these then? Yeah. Look at these ones. They fish. They fish. Fish. I had this friend at Haute Renfrew, and we both bought these together. We were sisters. I don't know what happened to her. How does this stay on your ear? Oh, you clip. Fish. <laughs> Tiny little ears. They're not going on? They're going on, but I know if I walked around town, they'd fall off in a hot second. Mm. Oh, speaking of which, did you know that so many, like, terms come from ball culture? Like, throwing shade. Throwing shade, yes. There's other one. There's, like, a lot, but throwing shade was the one that stood out to me. Who knew? Now you know. Anyway, this is the finished look. 80s inspired. Yeah. So definitely uh, check out Paris is Burning if you haven't had a chance to check it out already. We watched it on Crave, was it? Crave? We watched it on a streaming service available in yes. Canada. Anyway, what is it that we have? What was that product line that we have that we're gonna do for next? Z C. It's from Z -C. China. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's uh, the British Museum and Alice in Wonderland inspired. Yeah. It's the most beautiful makeup you've ever seen in your life. So we're going to be trying that out for the first time. I'm excited. I'm so excited. So definitely stay tuned for that. Let us know in the comments down below if you've seen Paris is Burning, if you like 80s makeup. And are you watching RuPaul? Yes. I bet you all are. A lot of people love that show nowadays. Yeah. So let us know, and we'll see you next time. Bye, Bye witches. witches.